Today on Monkey Life, Alison's on a mission to collect a marmoset found climbing scaffolding on a large block of flats. So he must be an escaped pet or a released pet. Something spooks the lemurs. This is all a combination of alarm calls, contact calls, and territory marking. And the hunt is on when the spider monkeys get sweet treats. <laughs> Monkey World in Dorset, buried deep in the English countryside, is the largest sanctuary of its kind on the planet. The team, led by Dr. Alison Cronin, rescue and rehabilitate abused and unwanted primates from all over the world. You can try and get him on a branch. Hey, you. Come on. The park provides a home for more than 250 monkeys and apes from 22 different species. It's an early morning start for Alison and the team as they're about to head off on yet another rescue. But this one is rather unusual. Got a phone call over the weekend um, that a marmoset was found running loose over scaffolding poles in Tam Tower Hamlet in London. Um, you know, you're always a bit cautious. You know, is it a hoax? Are people just, you know, having a joke or a prank? Um, but the more I spoke to this lady, the more real it sounded. The woman managed to send Alison a video clip of the marmoset roaming outside the block of flats where she lives. It's clearly a Jeffroy's marmoset. Um, it's very obvious they've got a big ring of white fur around their face. It's quite butch looking, quite stocky. So in, that my, in my mind, it makes it a male. Um, and, you know, we've only got the three Jeffroy's here at the park. So this individual, whether we decide to get him in with one of our Jeffroy's marmosets or pair him up with one of our common marmosets at the park. Um, companionship and the calls they make, um, the grooming and the behavior that they exhibit is so similar that the two species can happily mix together. The caller managed to successfully capture the marmoset and for the last couple of days, she's been trying to find its owner with no luck. So she contacted the park for help which is why Alison is now traveling to London on an early morning rescue mission. Sadly, this scenario is not unfamiliar. Monkey World has rescued nearly 60 marmosets in the last five years alone from the British pet trade. Hi, I'm Alison. <clears throat> Since being caught just over 48 hours ago, the Jeffroy's marmoset has been well looked after. Its temporary carer, Kerry, owns a collection of reptiles but finding a monkey on the loose in her block of flats was a bit of a shock. What happened? So Saturday, I'm walking my dog in the garden and then the monkey's climbing on the scaffolding downstairs and then after about 20 minutes of it running around, it's gone into the lobby and then that's where we've managed to cover it with the towel to then bring it up here. Wow, OK, and were there other people around? Was it quite it was, a scene? It was gathering attention, so obviously we wanted to move it and not let it get into the wrong hands, but not the attention of an owner. No one out looking for it, no posters, no nothing. And I'm surprised that nobody's bothering to... Yeah, try and find him. You know what? Um, I think it's a little boy. I can't yeah. tell until I He's actually... He's been standing up a lot and I can't see anything. Yeah, I... So maybe it's a but... lady. But, yeah, we'll get him back to the park and start giving him some D3 and stuff. Alison's first impressions are all positive. Marmoset seems pretty friendly, so I'm going to show him some um, wax worms and see if I put some in the box, if he'll just walk into the box if I marry it up to the cage. Second chance is actually grabbing him with a glove. Alison wants to get the marmoset back to the park as quickly as possible, so the team can get him or her settled into one of the bedrooms overnight. You see these? They're going right in here. You see? They're going in the box. No, 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 pay attention in here. But first, she needs to get the marmoset to go into the travel box. 
Good boy. The temptation of waxworms proves too much for the marmoset. Now I can't see if his tail's all the way in. I think it is. Yeah. Easy peasy. Good boy. Everybody's nosy. So if you have a new area, as long as it doesn't look too frightening, they're often pretty keen, and especially if you've got juicy waxworms in there. So um, didn't surprise me that he walked in. Even though Kerry has only had the marmoset for a short time, the little primate has made a big impression. Oh, look. It may have been two days, but he's touched our hearts in two days. He's an animal. Like We love our animals here. And for his future and what he deserves, he needs to go to people like you. Thank you. Thank Thanks you for so bothering to get in touch. I oh, really no, appreciate it. Thank you for giving him a better life. Um, I'll text you as soon as we're back. I'll yeah. let you know how we get on. Yeah. It's a beautiful day at the park, and Hanania's group of chimps are all outside, chilling, foraging, and generally soaking up the warm sunshine. Leader Hananya is out on patrol, making sure everything is safe and secure for his community. On a day like this, some, like Arthur, like nothing better than to laze around taking it easy. whilst others spend their time grooming. And for the females in the group, it's a chance to catch up on their sleep. Trudy and Cherry both making the most of the peace and quiet. But there's one little chimp who won't take it easy. Four-year-old Thelma. She likes nothing better than playing and fooling around. And she loves to get the older chimps to join in too. Especially her favourite uncle, Simon. Despite being Hanania's second in command, with all the responsibilities that go with that, he's also appointed himself as Thelma's personal bodyguard. Wherever she is, he won't be far away. Being a very bright chimp, he needs a lot of mental stimulation, and he's more than happy to accommodate Thelma's playful demands. But it's not just the little ones that like to play. Shamak is in a cheerful and mischievous mood. And if he can get his mate Simon involved, even better. The two boys have known each other since they arrived at the park in 1996 and have been close ever since. They both have boisterous and playful personalities, although Shamak is definitely the clown of the group. Play is extremely important in chimp society, especially in captivity where they don't have to hunt or defend themselves from rival groups or predators, like in the wild. It's how they learn build their strength and agility, and establish bonds in the group. And by watching others, youngsters like Thelma can have fun and learn at the same time. Although her tumbling technique may need a little more practice. With more than 250 primates of all shapes and sizes needing constant care and nourishment, it's important the team vary their feeding routines. It helps keep the group stimulated and active. Today, primate care member Donna is at the spider monkey enclosure, and the seasonal treat she's distributing involves a challenge. She's hiding the tasty strawberries in balls of straw, covered with a sheet. We provide enrichment for all the primates at the park every day in some form of, or another. Um, it doesn't have to be items like this every day. Even just by giving them whole foods or chopping it up small, just by varying it keeps it interesting for them. They're highly intelligent animals, so it's really important that we keep their minds stimulated, keeping them busy. In the wild, they have to think about uh, lots of different things, so it's important that we try and encourage that in captivity as well. 
There are just three spider monkeys in the group who all arrived together at the park in 2012. They are males Hickory and Flint and lone female Pumpkin. Flint and Pumpkin lead the way out. Flint heads straight over to investigate what's hidden under one of the sheets, but seems slightly perplexed by it all. Pumpkin has no such problem. It takes her only a few seconds to work it out, and she's soon able to tuck into the hidden strawberries. She's the most confident of the three, and the most dominant. She easily stretches out, using her prehensile tail as an anchor while grabbing the fruit. In the wild, spider monkeys use this fifth limb to get around the treetops. It helps them to get to fruit hanging beneath branches that are otherwise difficult to reach. By hiding the strawberries in hanging straw balls, Donna is trying to encourage these natural behaviours. Flint still hasn't worked out how to get to the hidden baskets. He's not having much luck from below. A change in tactics is called for. He attacks the straw balls from above. Ripping a hole in the sheet so he can get to the strawberries hidden underneath. Meanwhile, Pumpkin has spotted one of the water tubs Donna has also put out. They contain more strawberries, plus colourful toys to keep the spider monkeys busy. Hickory is the last one out. At 26, he's the old man of the group, almost seven years older than the others. He's a quiet character, but with a great personality and still loves to get involved. Hickory is really playful, um, so anything new or different in the enclosures, um, he just loves to play with it. He has a good old giggle, mouth open, bit of a shake of the head and just has a good old laugh with it and, and just is inquisitive and wants to know what it's all about. Pumpkin has decided the quickest way to get to the fruit is to tip it out of the tubs. In fact, none of the containers are safe as she moves around the enclosure, emptying them one by one. Flint is still totally engrossed in the hidden strawberries, although he's had enough of the hanging sheet. It's been really great today. It's nice to be able to see the spider monkeys all out together and interacting. Um, they are a little bit more difficult, different to some of the other primates that we have throughout the park, so we just have to be a bit more inventive with the items that we give them. Um, but yeah, it's really nice to do different things for them, um, just take a bit of time out to, to watch those natural behaviours. Over at Malagasy, the park's group of 10 ring-tailed lemurs are in for a sticky and hopefully challenging treat. Karen is putting out plastic balls smeared with honey and jam and filled with sunflower and pumpkin seeds. But it comes with a twist. Amongst the filled balls are some empty ones. It's all part of keeping the lemurs interested and stimulated. So when animals out in the wild go off looking for food, they're not necessarily always going to find food, so not every trip is going to result in them finding food. So that's actually why enrichment with nothing in is just as enriching, because if you put this out and every time they get a reward, well, that's OK, it's nice for them, but it's not interesting anymore. Whereas if they have to search through a few ones with nothing in to find something in an enrichment device, that's actually more enriching. So it's just as good to give empty things mixed in with the, the, the filled-up things. Come on, guys. The troop wastes no time. Indiana heads straight to the tunnel and is soon licking out the sticky treats. 
while Kaya is happy using her hands to pick out the seeds. Al is showing great balance on the ropes. Despite arriving at the park with a broken tail, he can move around incredibly well. He's now integrated with the other lemurs, but is still on the fringes of the gang. Houdini helps himself to a ball from the basket. He uses his long tongue to get at the seeds and lick the jam. In fact, all the lemurs seem to be enjoying what's on offer today. The male hierarchy within the group has undergone some changes recently, with five-year-old twins Kurt and Friedrich responsible for the shake-up. Come on, please, Friedrich. They've been making a bid to rise up through the ranks, causing Indiana to be ousted from the top spot. But they've a way to go before they secure the leadership. Some of these guys have been together for years and have formed close social bonds. But one individual who's found it tough recently is Houdini. He's been recovering from a chest infection, and while he was laid low, one of the twins seized his opportunity. Since Houdini was sick, Friedrich seems to have used it as a way to try and get above him in the hierarchy, and that even though Houdini's better now, uh, Friedrich's still kind of got a little bit of a fixation with Houdini, so we're doing a slow introduction to try and get the troop all back together again, but currently we're keeping Friedrich and Houdini separate for the majority of the time. The fruit treats are forgotten as something spooks the lemurs. One of them has spotted an intruder on the edge of the enclosure, possibly a deer, and straight away the group come together. This is all a combination of alarm calls, contact calls and ter territory marking, territory call, territorial calls. So I think Kaya saw something initially, so this is the alarm call. Um, and they all just kind of band together and make the noise to make sure everyone's aware of what's going on. Um, and then there's some contact calls, like that one there, just probably to check where everyone is. And it's kind of nice as if they do see something like a deer because it, it causes them to react and it causes them to react as a troop, so it's quite nice when we see them doing this. Ring-tailed lemurs are very different to most other species at the park. They're not monkeys, they're prosimians, meaning first primates, and are native to the island of Madagascar. Their physiology enables them to leap and bound large distances between the trees. They have big muscular legs to push off with, and soft pads on their hands and feet, perfect for landing on. Their big toe is more like a human thumb and is spread apart from the smaller toes, ideal for grasping and holding onto branches. But perhaps their strongest trait is their sense of smell. You'll know that they've got a longer snout and it's actually a wet nose and that's kind of indicative of their sense of smell being more important. So with these balls, they're able to get their full snout really into them to get the food out of them. That kind of shows how important their sense of smell is. And you see a lot of um, scent marking happening with the lemurs. And that's how they do a lot of their communication through scent marking. Lemurs have extremely sharp sabre-like teeth, perfect for tackling a variety of foods and lethal when it comes to defence in a fight. Their fabulous long fluffy tail isn't just for show. So the tail for uh, lemurs is communication, a lot of it. Um, so as they're walking around, the tail is up and that's kind of a way to keep an eye on each other and they'll, they'll follow each other through the grasses as long as they can see their tail. Um, they use it up in the tops up here like a counterbalance. So as they're walking along the branches or the rope, they will, it will be going from side to side. And that's just to keep them balanced on the rope or the high branches that they're on. They use it as a scarf. Temperatures do get quite cold in Madagascar, in the south of Madagascar, where they live at night time at some parts of the year. So they'll all huddle together and wrap their tail around them. And they also do stink fighting, which is the coolest piece of behavior ever. So they'll rub their tail past a scent gland that's on each wrist. And then they'll put their tail over their head and flick it at their opponent and basically sending their smell towards their opponent. And the, the, the strongest smell will be the indicative of the, um, the stronger male. It's been a long day for Alison. 
Following a dramatic rescue, she's finally arrived back at Monkey World after traveling to East London to collect a new addition to the park, a Jeffroy's marmoset. The small monkey team are ready and prepared to take charge of yet another primate victim of the British pet trade. You are beautiful. Yeah, nice, eh? Yeah, not bad. The marmoset was found by a resident in a block of flats. She spotted it climbing on nearby scaffolding. Animal lover Kerry managed to capture the tiny monkey and, after searching for an owner with no success, contacted Alison for help. 48 hours later, the marmoset has safely arrived at the ever-expanding marmoset complex. Here, the primate care team can assess what sex it is before deciding which group it might join. You ready? Yeah, ready when you are. Hi, little girl. Good boy. Understandably, the small primate is a bit wary of its new surroundings, but eventually plucks up the courage to explore. Now, Alison and the team are able to get a good look. Anything one way or another. And straight away, there's a surprise. That's a girl. Yes, yeah. sir. Well, there are no what, yeah. big yeah. testicles. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, female. We can now confirm that the new arrival, Jeff Royce, is a girl, and now we'll just have to work out a name yeah. for her. Yeah. And. I think getting a good diet and some vitamins into her that she needs, she'll be right as rain. Despite there being nearly 60 marmosets at the park, only three are Jeffroys, with the vast majority being common marmosets. The female's arrival means there are now two Jeffroys boys and two girls. The team are thinking of putting the newbie in with fellow Jeffroys Fred and his mate Sammy. Sammy's getting on in age, and if the new female integrates well into the group, she could be a perfect partner for Fred in the future. We'll just settle her in for tonight, see how she's doing in the morning, and come up with a plan of who we think would be the happiest match for her. We'll give her the best life that we can and try and find her a sort of happy, natural partner. Um, and yeah, so I'm really pleased that she's good and she's safe, most importantly. All the team are keen to get a closer look at the new arrival and their next big decision will be what to call her. Next time on Monkey Life, concern for the health of Chimp Sally. She's very lethargic and listless and weak. She's a lot weaker than normal. And a cracking treat for the chimps, but Gamba pushes his luck with Cindy.